everyone. Welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are taking a look at the custom Lego Rebels Imperial Troop Transport. From the designer Rob Van Leeuwen, we have what is essentially the first version of the K79S80, and he's created the frame in such a way that you can easily switch between the troop carrying variant or the transport more focused on moving cargo. Now, ferrying troops and supplies through combat zones was the primary objective of this repulsor lift, while sometimes it could be used as a ground assault vehicle. They in essence fill the same role as a modern day APC and even look a bit similar in a certain way. It's built to minifigure scale so it fits in with the rest of the Star Wars models that you see flashing by the screen. And before I get into the closer details and functions of this custom creation, first I'd like to say that if you wanted to build this model for yourself, the instructions can be found at our web store www.brickvault.toys. With each purchase comes the PDF step-by-step -step building guide, a parts list for fast ordering online, the models are are physically tested in real life, instructions are tested for clarity, and the parts are curated for availability. Buying instructions is a great way to help support the channel and the talented designers we work with, like Rob, who has also built the later iteration of the Imperial Troop Transport that you see from the Mandalorian, as well as the Trexler Marauder. Plus, on top of that, he's also got the amazingly detailed Rebels AT-80, which actually matches pretty well with this transport here. So click that link in the description below if you want to build, and let's get started off real quick by getting into the history of this vehicle both inside and outside of the Star Wars universe. That last sentence didn't really make sense, but let me explain. So first here is the general evolution of the Imperial Troop Transport within Star Wars. The Rebels variant popped up first from the Star Wars Rebels show. This troop transport was then seen again in the Mandalorian, only now it's been many decades later, so it looks a bit different. It's been updated, no doubt, and probably has improved specs. I personally see a bigger cannon, better access for troops getting in and out, and who knows, maybe it's got better armor and speed as well. The Trexler Marauder is also a more modern iteration, but designed more directly for combat so it looks similar to that one but just a little bit different so that's the evolution within the Star Wars universe but it's kind of fun to show this picture here which is a toy from 1977 this vehicle was never officially brought into the Star Wars movies or official canon until the Rebels TV show but you can see that this vehicle was certainly influenced by this original toy it's pretty apparent but on top of that it's also very interesting to see that later the more evolved version of the transport with in the universe from the Mandalorian more closely resembles this original toy from 1977. That in particular is referencing the rounded cockpit and little red stripe. So it's Strange to see how the toy industry is influenced by Star Wars universe, and then decades later, the toys come all the way back around and influence the look of what's coming out as Star Wars content now. Okay, sorry, that was a little bit of a strange tangent, but I think a fun historical anecdote for this model. And now it's actually time to get into the functions. There is space for six troopers or six figs, three on either side. I like that Rob included that little slant across the front doors with the wedge plates that crisscross. They don't move here but it does look good as a detail. The turret on top swivels and it also tilts up and down, but this connection is a little tight. So I usually like to break these bits off, then tilt, then put them back on. The larger cannons in the front have some very easy articulation. And uh, as a side note, I don't know why the Empire moved away from these rounded cannons that could move in any direction. Seems like as the years went by, they moved more to fixed cannons, which I think is a strange thing. Anyways, the doors on either side of the cockpit open. The bar handle here makes it easy to grab. And I also appreciate that little inlaid keypad detail here that's attached to those headlights. So it's kind of sunk into the body a little bit better. In terms of total access to the inside, the roof can come off in two places. And now this is what I call a full interior for a model. The pilot seat is surrounded by consoles and controls and in the back there are weapons mounted onto the walls folding out seats and in the back you can even see the controls for operating the top turret the frame here is very impressive because there's so much to appreciate on the inside and out while the model's strength honestly just isn't sacrificed here for any of these extra details it's a really strong build but moving on fast though this is a quick look at the bottom nothing much to see here and also now this is the very back of the build with that subtle blue thruster glow and also 
also some clever rounded details built into the frame. Okay, that's about it for the standard troop transport variation. Let's get to the cargo configuration. This alternate roof piece is now added in the center. It doesn't have a top turret and also this area of the roof concaves inward a little bit, which sort of tucks the supplies into the body of the transport. Everything is either studded in or held in by a little bit of tension, which is useful so they don't fly off when you move this piece upside down. And then all six of the troop platforms can just come right off the build and be switched around with the cargo iterations that don't have those side doors. I really like being able to quickly switch out these subsections, so it's nice to have the container details pre-built for fast changeouts. And now the model feels extremely different. Rob spent a lot of time working on unique and creative little container designs here, which makes the model a whole heck of a lot more visually interesting than if you were just to put one or two baseline designs down for containers and repeat the whole thing over and over. Wow, I feel like I almost breezed right past this whole thing. There's a lot of clever connections. There's clean angles for the front cockpit, for example, or there's that nice sidewall greebling. But really, there's just a lot to like about this small transport build. It kind of feels like two in one. And on that note, if you did want to build this model for yourself at BrickVault.toys, haha, check the link in the description below. There are multiple parts lists included with this one in case you wanted to build just the troop carrier or the cargo variant, or like you can see here, have the pieces to just switch out freely between both. I think Rob really brought a fun and clean design to the table here. It's nice to see the more pragmatic vehicles of the Star Wars universe getting a little bit of extra attention here. And I'd definitely like to know what you guys think about this in the comments below. So thank you everyone for watching. Let me know what kinds of creations you'd like to see built in the studio next. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever it is that you want to do. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.